Yeah, get up. Wakey, wakey. This is Business Live Global Radio, an international radio station connecting business owners from around the globe. I'm your host, Johnny Boy, the consumer monkey McDonald. Let me hear you. Yeah. So I'm going to be interviewing businesses, business owners from around the world, finding out what makes them tick, their struggles, their trials and their successes. Listen in for all things business, and if you want to contribute to a show and be interviewed on Business Life Global, reaching an audience across already 18 countries, then DM me and we'll set something up. And now, let's see who we've got for today. What do you do if you're an elite performer and you're struggling to overcome blocks? I give you Dr. Irene Kopp. Hi there. Hey, Jonathan. So happy to be here. It's great to have you. Tell the uh, watchers and uh, listeners a bit about you. Uh, Very happy to, Jonathan. I am a medical doctor, doctor of chiropractic uh, with many other certifications and qualifications, really that span both Eastern and Western medicine, as well as resilience training, neuroplasticity, acupuncture, um, leadership, and and success training. And it really, truly is um, an honor to to be here talking with your your listeners, your audience, about how they too can live their best lives while impacting the most people in the world possible. Sounds that's uh, well, we have history, obviously. And I, you know, I love what you do. Why? Why is it that you help these purpose-driven high achievers? Mm, because I was once just like them, and twenty years ago, I was thinking I was on top of the world, that I was helping as many people in the world as possible, and you know, moving and shaking, grooving and rolling, and I ended up crashing and burning because. I was running on empty and didn't know it. And I literally crashed and burned in a near fatal car accident, breaking 10 bones, head injury. I know you're familiar with all of that. And the worst of it is that it happened with my two young sons in the car when I lost consciousness. So my six-year-old developed PTSD from what he witnessed at this scene. Mm. My four-year-old had a catastrophic brain injury, had to be airlifted to the nearest pediatric hospital three hours away for emergency life-saving surgery on his brain, was kept in an induced coma for almost a month while they decided if he was going to live or not. And then we were told he would never walk, talk, or pass high school. And it was totally unacceptable to me that, you know, number one, that you know, that that prognosis could possibly come true. Absolutely mm-hmm. not. And when I mentioned to the neurosurgeon who is preeminent in the world, you know, what about neuroplasticity? He went, no, you don't understand. The brain tissue is gone. He was literally missing like 20% of his brain. And I refused to take those answers. Mm. And so I went searching for the answers on how to heal my son, heal myself even against all odds. The other part of it was I had a lot of time to think while in hospital with 10 broken bones. And it was the first SARS quarantine. So I wasn't allowed visitors or, right. So I had a lot of time to think. And the question that kept going through my mind was why me? Why did this happen to me? Because I'm a doctor. I eat right. I exercise. I teach meditation. I do yoga. I did everything right. Mm. Why me? And that's when I realized that there were these hidden blocks that were literally draining my life energy. What my what, physical what life are energy. what are the, these these hidden blocks? What are they? The hidden blocks that I found that don't get talked about in this way, especially, are, and the biggest one is trauma. Mm -hmm. Our personal trauma, our intergenerational trauma, our epigenetic trauma. So personal trauma, and that may be physical injuries, as you've had. Mm -hmm. It may be 
abuses and and other traumas. So it may be so-called big T's. It may be the little traumas, like bullying mm. in school. It It's also the intergenerational trauma. In other words, those trauma responses that were passed down to you by those people who raised you. Mm -hmm. And then the epigenetic trauma they now know is the the that trauma can modify the expression of your DNA. Yes. That sets you up for disease and increased mortality. And and it may be due to like big cultural traumas like the Holocaust mm -hmm. or slavery or and I happen to have a lot of epigenetic trauma in my background. So in other words, people may be impacted by trauma and not even know about it. And it's not just the mental and the emotional effects of trauma. It's literally that it is setting you up for disease, for disability, yeah. for mortality. Yeah. Here's the thing, and though. So you and I understand neuroplasticity from a actually having observed it working for the people we love um, and are in ourselves. I understand as you understand about epigenetics because I read a lot of books because I'm interested in brains. I so I read this book Why We Sleep by Matt Walker and there's a chapter about doctors and how they are rushing around and how in fact the entire residency culture of doctors training was invented by a guy who was on cocaine uh, all the time and that was the reason he insisted on these ridiculous hours. But the doctors were working so hard, getting so so few hours sleep, that it actually says it in the book. Driving home, they have a crash and become patients of their own hospital. So the people that are going to be listening to this that are hard performers, and I was in a room of them the other day, what... How... How do the blocks stop you or hurt your success? So, great question. And I'll back up and say, for the benefit of your listeners, thank you for bringing me back down to earth. Neuroplasticity very simply means the ability of the brain to change, to heal, to grow. Because for the longest time, they did not believe that like once your brain cells were there, they figured mm -hmm. if something happened, whether it was a stroke, whether it was a brain injury, they were gone. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm here to say that that is not the case. My son, who was not supposed to walk, talk, or pass high school because he was missing 20% at least of his brain, now walks, talks, and just graduated from engineering mm -hmm. in university. Yeah. So it is very, very possible. That's neuroplasticity. Epigenetics just simply means we all have our DNA, our gene code, right? And people may be familiar with um, even celebrities who have said, well, I have, um, I have the genes for early Alzheimer's right. or I have the genes for breast cancer, right? The yep. thing is, just because you have the genes for them, does Doesn't not mean, mean yeah, exactly. that it's going to happen, right? It's all it is, is a book. Mm. And it's what causes that book to be opened, the signals mm. that say, open the book here, read this section, create this protein. That's part of it. The epigenetic is those proteins that the genes code for, kind of like just architectural blueprints, it's what you do afterwards. It's like, okay, so here is the structure of my house. What are the features I'm going to put in in the house? Right, I understand. So people should obviously reach out to you. Your website and contact details will be on the show notes. Um, speaking to someone like yourself in the last couple of moments before we put your song on, what should they do? How's the best way to get in touch with you? The best way is our website, successshiftinstitute.com. You can find me on LinkedIn, um, Instagram, Facebook as well. And, and really, truly, it's knowing that you can lead and create the 
biggest impact in the world and have a good life too. Mm. You don't have to sacrifice mm. your health, your energy, your relationships, your personal life to do it. No. And by clearing these hidden blocks, you'll actually make an even bigger impact in the world. It's amazing that you're able to assist people who are, would be normally considered to be at the top of their game. And with the work and the knowledge that you bring to them, you're elevating their impact in the world. It's incredible. You've chosen a song that has a lot of meaning, uh, which is John Parr, St. Elbow's Fire. Well, what's, the, what's the reason you chose that song? I chose this song because, as you said, what was one of your favorite songs from growing up that was inspirational to you? And this really, truly was. It, you know, it was sure it was made popular for a variety of reasons. One of the biggest movies in the 1980s, St. Elmo's Fire by the same name. And for me, it had special meaning as a Canadian. It was actually written for and because of a, a fellow Canadian, uh, Rick Hansen was a Canadian athlete who at the age of 15, he was like on his way to the top mm -hmm. and in, he was in a traffic accident, uh, hit by a truck and paralyzed. And What I'll do, because I don't want to, the uh, listeners to miss out on the song, what I'll do is I will thank you very much for joining us on Business Live Global. Um, I urge anyone listening to contact uh, Dr. Irene. She's a wonderful, lovely person. Irene, thanks very much for coming. Thank you. Take care. Right.